My pleasure, Anne, and I was just tremendously honored to be invited, so thank you. Well, it's such a great show. Um, as you may know now, we have the Archies, the Archibald, and um, it's such a favorite in Australia because everyone gets behind it. And I was thinking one day, wouldn't it be interesting for fiber artists who love doing portraits or not um, to be challenged and to then present another fiber artist? Because my goal is to raise the collectability of fiber art. And I thought that's a great idea. So here we are with beautiful um, Ain't the Archies up and showing at Timeless Textiles. Oh, now, Mary, when I first looked at your work, I was really intrigued as to how you work that cheesecloth and how you saturate it and create such beautiful artworks. How did you land in the world of cheesecloth? You know, it was totally a fluke and it was uh, just being in my studio playing with fiber and I had made uh, uh, for a one foot square uh, auction a fundraiser for uh, a, an organization that I belong to, Studio Art Quilt Associates. And I uh, made a one foot square piece with some loose dry cheesecloth. When I held it up for my kids, it was one of my sons who said, well, it's interesting, mom, but you're holding it sideways. <laughs> I said, Sweetheart, this is an abstract piece and the artist gets to decide. And yeah, yeah, he yeah. said, well, if you turn it sideways, look at the cheesecloth. It almost looks like a human figure. And I looked at it and uh, they all laughed. And I thought, oh, possibilities yes. here. So ran down to my studio and I couldn't get the dry cheesecloth to behave. I couldn't get it to stay in position long enough to do a human figure. So then I thought, okay, maybe I just need uh, a model. And so I was looking for the, the piece I had done looked like an elderly man with baggy pants seen from the back it was all kind of peculiar. But I thought I'll look for a photo <laughs> like that. <laughs> Didn't exist, of course. But I did find this wonderful photograph by Chalmers Butterfield who's uh, long since passed away, but his son had posted them online, copyright free and said, free for anyone to use as long as you mention my father's name. Mm. So the uh, short story is I smooshed some cheesecloth around on plastic with glue and water until it dried. And then I thought that worked and I sewed it to a background fabric and it was very rough, but it was you know, sort of a, a loosey goosey version of a figure sitting. And then uh, this same organization, Sakwa said, we're doing a, this auction of one foot squares. Could you make something? And I thought I can't do an entire figure in uh, one foot so um, so um, I just did her face and this was a little more persnickety than doing an entire loose figure so I had to be precise about the eyes and the nose and the ear and the hair and all the rest so it was a little the first one took me a long time because I was pushing the cheesecloth around if you can imagine with a toothpick no. uh, trying to get it <laughs> just so but it worked and it went into the auction and got, uh, I had a lot of notoriety about this. I became you know, the, the cheesecloth artist. So I thought, okay, um, clearly I'm on to something here. And that was how it all began. And how many years ago was that? Mary? That was 2008. So okay. yeah, so doing the math quickly. <laughs> Don't you love out of just fiddling around, you land on something that makes you really happy to explore and keep pushing the boundaries. Absolutely. And of course, it's, there, there's been um, some growth of a metamorphosis over time because you can't just keep doing the same thing. So my initial pieces were white cheesecloth on a black textile background. Mm -hmm. And I was playing with chiaroscuro so I could get the light strike in the face. But after doing many of those, I began missing color. And so I started putting it onto colored background. Then I began painting the background. Then I began dyeing the cheesecloth. <laughs> and, now, <laughs> and now I've moved on to Nisha, who is an entirely new step in my process. So tell us a little bit about him and then we'll come back to the technique you've used because you've created a very, um, larger than life portrait of him. What is it about him that interests you? You introduce him to us. And so I got an email through my website saying, you don't know me, but I am the person who bought the first <laughs> donation that you made. And so I would like to purchase something from your website. And I was just uh, 
surprised, delighted, and we began corresponding. Turned out he was an artist as well and a textile artist, so we had so much in common. And then we met in person in at a conference in San Francisco. And now, I, really, I chat with him daily. So uh, he's a tremendous inspiration to me and um, a wonderful support. You know, whenever I'm concerned about the direction that my work is going, he's a great person to bounce ideas off of because he understands textiles. And while he doesn't do work similar to mine, he is he does incredibly detailed work and so he's able to understand my process and why i why i do what i do because mm. he does a lot of art quilts and they're very uh geometrically detailed but uh very beautiful absolutely but you know he's even moved on from that and it's probably not all up on his website yet i'll chide him about that but he he does a lot of work in zentangles and so sometimes he does them with textiles and he will stitch the zentangle pattern right into the because he's a fabulous uh, quilter but he also of course does work with pen and paper and um it really enjoys doing um illustrative work um uh, sort of uh, persian geometry and he'll use all different inks on different kinds of paper and he makes paper books he's really quite prolific Tell me a little bit about the technique you mentioned it was a bit different um for creating his portrait well so uh, i have done a few commissions over the years and a couple of years ago i did a commission for a couple who wanted to have their portrait um, very similar to a piece I had done called Lighthouse Keeper. And in that one, I had made the cheesecloth so transparent that you could see the ocean mm. in behind him. And I thought that was, you know, kind of dramatic and fun. And I wrote yeah. words in the sky. It was the first few lines of the poem Sea Fever by John Macefield. I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea in the sky. So they said, well, we love that, but it's already sold out of the exhibition. I had it in, so could you do us? And instead of um, that particular quote, we have a, another word that we would like you to use that is very personal to us. And so I agreed to do all of that. But when I placed their faces over top of the dark background that they had requested of a lake that's nearby us, they look very old indeed. And, you know, they're in their 60s, I suppose, but cheesecloth has a texture to it and it really emphasizes, particularly on a dark background, all the lines and wrinkles in the face. In the, in the end, I was able to lighten the background and there wasn't as much contrast and the couple were pleased, the piece was finished and, and off it went. So with Nisha, he's younger than I am, so I didn't want to make him look like he was 95 years old. And I thought, okay, how am I going to manipulate the cheesecloth to give the impression of smooth skin. I, I was anxious to do him in cheesecloth because of course he's got the mustache and the beard and the yes. wonderful hair, but I didn't want to do the skin in cheesecloth. And I thought, what would it look like? It's a total experiment for you, Anne. What would it look like if, <laughs> I, if wonder I, <laughs> I wonder what, what the finished appearance would be like if I were to paint his face on fabric mm -hmm. with textile paints and put the cheesecloth over top of the painting. So mm -hmm. I was very pleased because his face doesn't look mm -hmm. aged and elderly, mm -hmm. but I uh, had the wonderful texture of his hair and his beard mm -hmm. and his mustache mm -hmm. and his garment. Um, I turned it into sort of a vibrant purple and I had the painting of the quilted collar underneath, mm -hmm. but I was able to sculpt the cheesecloth and place it over top and stitch mm -hmm. it down. Mm -hmm. And you get the, um, the dimension of the paint look, but the texture of the cheesecloth. Mm. So I was very pleased with how yes, it worked out. Yes, it's beautiful. You did a beautiful job with it. Thank and you. does he like it? Oh, he loves it. Yes. He, but, but, you know what? He's such a supporter. Even, even if he didn't like it. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure how honest he would be and say, yeah, no, that one's a dud, Mary. Because he knows, you know, the challenges that I face with each exhibition that I enter, what I'm striving to to do and to move on to something new so he knew that this was a departure from my comfort zone which yes. is always encouraging me to do mm. and you know sometimes we get settled in what has worked in the past and it's difficult to pull yourself out of that except that after a while of course you you do become kind of 
bored with that. And you do want to try something a little different and a little new. So I'm so excited about that. Now I'm branching off on a, what I think will be a series of small um, portraits of people with red hair, because I was really taken with his sandy red hair. So I'm, I'm working on a piece right now with a pink t-shirt and bright red hair. And I don't know if I will paint the face as realistically as I did his. I wanted uh, to, you know, it, it's sort of an homage to him. So I didn't want to take too many liberties with the paint mm -hmm. and get a little too carried away with abstracting it. Yes. Um, so I may start moving in that direction a little bit too, not be quite so realistic. However, I have, with the beauty of cheesecloth, been able to move into the animal kingdom mm -hmm. and do a lot of furry bears and dogs and horses and things like that but you know the human face is just um, amazing I loved doing Willie Nelson for example the the fun of doing him was his face is so lined and grizzled mm -hmm. it's just cheesecloth is the perfect way to reflect mm -hmm. that skin texture mm -hmm. and so I'm fascinated by the human face but I don't think I would ever just resort to painting it on a canvas for example. Mm. I need to do the sewing, I need mm. to add the textiles, I need my cheesecloth because mm. to me that really adds such a dimension to a mm. portrait. To, it's almost like you can reach out and touch it and mm. feel the, the hair or the mm. hat that the person is mm. wearing. It's very sculptural isn't it? it Absolutely. Brings it to you, life. You, you've mm. nailed it. So when mm. I'm teaching this um, subject I'll sometimes say to students well it's kind of like painting with cheesecloth and it's kind of like sculpting with cheesecloth mm. so the the painting part comes with the sense that we do in fact apply a paintbrush to move and manipulate the cheesecloth to get directionality on the on the plastic as we're creating it but there's a sculptural aspect to it as well where we're building up layers of cheesecloth and of course the uh, the higher value of the face where the light is striking it would be like a number 10 pure white mm. and right down to level zero of pure black mm. and students sometimes have, a, have difficulty um, trying to imagine how you could leave the back of somebody's head completely black mm. so I, I'm always admonishing them don't use your brain use your eyes I sure wish I could come to Australia for the <laughs> opening and see this exhibition in person I've had a sneak preview of some of the other pieces that are in it and it, I, I'm just so excited about it. Kills me not to be there. <laughs> it would be delightful to have you. Uh, and as soon as this COVID thing has ended, yeah, we yeah. can travel freely again. <laughs> I would love, Australia's definitely on my bucket list.